once um, humans started like owning their thoughts, that was when the disconnect happened. Mm. It was like, but like I was, I was just, it was talking to him and I was like, man, I feel like if you just regarded every single thought of yours as a spirit, as its own like entity, then like the, that space of being like, Face awareness would be way quicker to get to, mm. you know, and that everything's just visiting <clears throat> and everything is its own entity, you know, like each thought or whatever, or like, you know, it, it's for some reason for me, that's why I like animism and in like sh- aspects of shamanism, because it's like you can kind of give everything a personality. And for some reason for me, that's easier than to like, that like everything's its own individual, but then everything's also a part of the whole, you know, mm. and you regard all your thoughts as like spirits and then none of it's truly yours. I don't know. Some, I don't, it was weird, but I feel no, like I, I'd lo- I, I love that because it like recognizes that like your, your home is just a space. Like your home is just like an unidentified space of awareness and like everything. If you give it like, like, uh, like an identity of its own. Each thought is just kind of like a visitor in that home. I think, I think that way of thinking is like much more conducive to remembering who you truly are in each moment. Mm-hmm. I like that. And we need to figure out which culture you, that actually was. Huh? We need to figure out which culture that was. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was the Greeks and then it, something the changed. I think oh. so. But but then, like, but then once you're owning your thoughts, then it's so easy to get separate from nature, you know. And then yeah, you, start, you just follow a thought. Everything and turns illusion. into an object <clears throat> rather than like a living thing that's a part of you, right? Also, side note: I think the original Avatar had a like ayahuasca toad kind of ceremony that was removed from it. That oh, like they oh, had really? they took yeah. it out of the movie. Yeah, it was like a psychedelic ceremony <clears throat> and they didn't they just didn't include it. It's like I don't think it got fully finished, but you can like look it up and you can find clips of like the semi-finished version of it. That's crazy. Yeah. It's interesting cuz you can see these things like starting to seep back into the mainstream and they're like seeping back through like music and movies and art like these recognitions and and like like sharings like this, I think conversations like this are super important because like mm-hmm. like so many people, including myself, uh, are unable to talk with many people about like these things, and so it's it's nice to uh, have a pat- platform like this where like we actually can talk about these things. But like, it's awesome that like in a movie like Avatar, that even if the scene was cut out, there's other scenes that are like you know, very similar in both those movies that like brings it to the mainstream of like, there is a better way to, to like do life. And it is Mm -hmm. treating your body as if it's more of an avatar because it is, you know, it's a Mm -hmm. vessel for consciousness, a temper, a temporary and time bound (laughs) vessel for consciousness, you know? And I think, or, or even just treating, I, like my body is another entity like um as another spirit you know mm. and then because then there's for me anyway <clears throat> if i treated more like a vessel then i'm like really hard on myself you know yeah you're right um, you don't respect it as much the max yeah you don't love it as much yeah you're right yeah you don't love it but then there's been times where like you know i was sitting in a sweat lodge and I got like a vision from my hands flipping me off (laughs) and it was because I was using too much as a trainer and they were getting like cracked and bloodied and, Mm. and they were pissed at me. And I realized like, Oh, my hands are fucking mad at me because I've been just treat like treating them like a machine, you know? And they wanted more, um, like gentle movement. Like your hands had a want of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted more gentle movement and they didn't want to be like always, training and always working out and yeah then it wouldn't be so hard but um yeah it's yeah um shoot also 
when you when you when you were saying with um avatar and like how, you know how do we get away from this or what like this is how life could be i thought i was alone so in the movie i got really depressed because i was like <laughs> i just want to be there <laughs> i want to be here yeah and um i guess it was like a cultural phenomenon like it was like a post avatar depression like a lot of <laughs> a post avatar depression yeah really yeah. like getting a glimpse of what like life you've always felt should be like the natural way to like you want to live life ever since you were a child like and then somehow yeah. everybody gets like sidetracked into like like <laughs> unnecessary like resource captures like whether that resource is like money or attention or like the accumulation of whatever uh we just all get sidetracked in this weird thing but like everybody remembers being a kid and being happy and like mm -hmm. like yeah. avatar is is as if like children continued their natural intrigue and natural spirit and tender ten tendency to like want to be in nature like kids want to play in the mud kids want to be outside mm -hmm. kids want to like run through the forest and like talk to animals like so many kids talk to animals i talk to animals mm -hmm. i still talk to animals <laughs> you know? like it feels natural to like have a real or start to like at least make the attempt at a natural relationship with like earth and animals and the fact that, yeah. that like we're not doing that is fucking depressing. I totally know what you mean. I also like envied the direct uplink to like there's like the direct connection to mm. um all living things and then even to like to spirit itself, you know, that I think they could like connect with the tree and they could tap into like the living spirit of every living thing on the planet on their planet. Um and I was just like I so badly wanted that. And it's like and I didn't know how. But um, I do feel like now I, I feel like I want to go outside and make just even set the intention to connect to life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's really subtle and really like quiet. And it takes like, you know, a lot of stillness or like kind of that like intentional receiving intentional listening but not just auditory but like all senses that and i feel like you know like you actually can connect to it dude you can you can and i do the same thing and we know this because like we do this shit every time we're together like we'll go and just like sit with a tree or just put our hands mm -hmm. on a tree or like slap the tree out of like you know admiration <laughs> and be like yes mm -hmm. this tree's fucking doing it like it's great, yeah. huge <laughs> yeah. and like we're just celebrating along with the tree and like treating it like it's its own thing because it is i mean we're i mean obviously it's all the same consciousness that we are but like it's a unique a, a unique outgrowth and to celebrate mm -hmm. that is like something that like you and i are very good at but unfortunately mm -hmm. we're separated and like <laughs> geographically but like yeah because because like and I still do it. In fr I don't care who's around. Like if I see mm -hmm. an amazing plant or an, an an animal I'm drawn towards or whatever, like I'll go and make a, a space for that relationship. Like I'll, I'll go and like, like admire a leaf for like 20, mi 20 minutes. Be like, wow, mm -hmm. like the leaves on this tree are simply amazing. Like, like, ha like, ha like doing that. But then like so many people will look at you as if you're a weirdo. You know, <laughs> like, to well, Cara, think... like even to Cara when we're on walks, and I know like Emily when you're on hikes, like, like we would love to sit there and to make real relationships with a space, but like most people don't get that, you know, mm -hmm. and no problem there. That that's totally fine. But it's nice to like do that with people and like oh, yeah. with people and with nature and like have a true communion. <laughs> oh yeah, and that in. I don't know. It's it's awesome. And it's like and it's cool when you meet other people that like enjoy that as well and like just get it. Well, so many you people know? are on the tippy edge. Like you say mm -hmm. something and they're like, Oh yeah, like like I do that or like that's so cool. But it's like they've never really given themselves to it to just be like he's that guy. He's the guy that like yeah. goes and sits with plants for like way too long, awkwardly long. 
And like, <laughs> yeah, so many people well, want to do that, I think, but just don't. I, I have this one story that's uh, from one of my, um, it was just, it, one of my friends from that, in that ceremony community. Um, mm -hmm. She was like, we do, we do like a regular um, like talking circle. And one thing she shared that I think she'd be fine with me sharing, but um, she was like talking about how, She's like, has this relationship with like a tree. She's like, yeah, I can tell like it's been really missing me and like I've been missing it. And it's like, would she say something like, um, I know it's been really wanting me to visit and I've been wanting to visit it and I just haven't made the time. But like, it's like a friend, you know, it's literally like a, a friend that regularly and yeah, I just thought it's cool like to hear, to hear that. Yeah, I'm glad she shared that with you. More people should share yeah. things like that. Maybe like, I don't know, listen to us two goofballs if anybody ends up listening to us. Uh, yeah. Obviously, this is just like a practice go of seeing if everything works logistically. But like, uh, yeah, I'll edit this and see how everything sounds and everything like that. And we can change from there. But like if when people do, because obviously we're going to talk about this this type of shit again like oh, yeah. when people do hear this like I, I think it is more of a permission slip like i know i've listened to like oh, certain yeah. podcasts and like like hearing certain guests come on and say something that they do in their regular life that maybe is not the most normal thing to do necessarily and be like mm -hmm. yeah like that person does that what like mm -hmm. i've wanted to do that too <laughs> i'll just do that i guess some, yeah. i guess that somebody like i guess that's a thing you can do and so like <laughs> hearing that people are doing that and like still being you know you don't have to be like a total fucking like weirdo no. about it like if this can mm -hmm. just be a natural thing like it's not like you have to like never wear shoes in public again or something like yeah. that you're fucking walking through target start like, smelling like patchouli oil right you ain't gotta do all that like you don't gotta be like such like no offense to like like no. hi hippies or whatever but like you don't yeah. have to like fit that look you don't all have mm -hmm. to have dreads or like like grow your armpit hair out super fucking long and be stinky like mm -hmm. and I'll always have dirty feet like you don't you know what i mean you don't have mm -hmm. to do that like you can be like this stuff can be more normal you don't have to like feel like you need to be fitting into another group like a very specific mm -hmm. group in order to do these things this should be like our most natural thing that we do yeah oh yeah and it and there's definitely been times where like i'm talking to trees and no one would even know that i'm doing that you know mm -hmm. like oh for sure actually i have a cool story from um, I was like preparing for a, a vision quest and one of like the prompts from people facilitating it was like, you know, talk, talk, like see what you can learn from the elements or from plants or from, you know, fire and water or earth, you know, <clears throat> or like go talk to some trees and see what you can learn from them or what they might have to share for you, like heading into this quest. And I was walking in a park, um, by the lakefront um, in uh, Bayview or in Milwaukee, in near Bayview, and I was like walking through these trees, and I like saw this really big one. And first, I was like, I don't know, I'll try the, I'll just try the biggest one. And I sat down <laughs> by it and like gave it like some tobacco, like a little offering, or or maybe it was a piece of hair because I didn't have tobacco. I don't remember which, <laughs> but like I just gave it, you know, give it something. And I was sitting there, and like nothing was happening. Okay. Um, sorry. Oh, hey, Duke. Oh, big dogs, big dogs, and, big dogs. And um, but I was um, so I like, so I started walking around and like just checking out the other trees, and there I was just kind of feeling into it, and I was like, okay, and just kind of sent it out like, you know, which tree has something to share, and I saw like the smallest, rattiest, kind of crustiest looking tree. And, and for some reason, it just is like me. I'm like, all right, cool. And I sat down by it and I asked, you know, I gave it an offering and I asked like, you know, what do you, ha what do you have to share with me? And, um, and then all of a sudden it, like, I didn't prompt it, but I just felt like all of the energy in me kind of like settling down and kind of connecting with like, I don't know. It almost felt staticky behind my back. Mm. And then it was almost like 
guiding me from within and immediately like my it was like my ears opened up and i heard like all the noises from the um the park and it like kept on guiding me like you know like oh i think it's trying to show me how to like meditate because like trees are like the expert meditators and i was trying to focus on my breath and it kept on pushing me to the sounds and just like listen to the sounds and so i like went along with it and it was just like my it's like my whole inside just got the most still it's ever been before my whole life but it was like all the sounds were just so like vibrant and clear and i just sat there for the for a while and it was just like a very subtle but peaceful like sense of bliss and then there was like a very distinct sense that like it was done and i just was really overwhelmed with gratitude of like wow thank you this is you know and i still like when i'm in milwaukee i still go visit that tree and say hi and like (laughs) you know and it it was just really really cool and it was just it was very much a nonverbal but dialogue, you know, mm. and, and an awesome teaching. But it was really cool. And it was just, it was all like kind of happened through intuition of just like that subtle, soft feeling inside of like, I'm come by me, sit by me. It was really how, neat. How big was it? Like how thick um, around? It was I think it was probably about that thick around. Okay, that's but it was like larger than I was thinking. I was thinking it was a little tar- Charlie Brown. I was thinking thing. In, like, like most of the trees in that park were like really big oaks, oh, and yeah, then yeah. and then like maybe some. Um, I don't know what the other what it would be. I have the on the tip of my tongue, but just the really big trees, and this one was like small, way smaller, and like kind of gnarly looking it was cool dude i feel like i feel like i i know exactly the experience you're talking about and uh yeah i often have the same thing in nature but like it's 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 actually like as i've like listened to other people's experiences and and accounts of it and writings of it um i i've i've gotten better words and descriptions for it you know like you you have mm. this profound experience but like you don't it's not it's not something you can talk about right it's not something mm-hmm. you can really talk about and if you're talking to somebody that's never experienced it like it just doesn't come across like it's like oh mm. that that sounds cool <laughs> but but like they don't understand yeah. the like the magical nature that you just experienced you know like they don't mm-hmm. understand that like there was this point of non-duality that took place you know like where Mm -hmm. you weren't separate from the tree like you weren't separate from the sounds it was it's not like there was a sound and like then the hearer of the sound is separate things it was just like there was just hearing like the sound was hearing and that was just like one thing and it was just like you were the awareness of the space that sounds happened in that whatever happened in and Mm -hmm like vision happened in if you had your eyes open at any point or whatever but like you just become kind of the space of the being and like that space is shared with that tree and with whatever Mm -hmm. you were sitting on and like that space is just like shared with like almost like emerging with ubiquitous consciousness (laughs) you know like Mm -hmm. almost using the tree as like a permission slip to tap into that but um yeah, I know the exact experience you're talking about. I think more people than like we really know have had that kind of experience. And it doesn't always have to like happen when you just sit down next to a tree. Like it can just ha- mm-hmm. like sometimes this happens to me in the gym. Like I'll just be like really, like uh I don't well I don't, I don't know. I I think I'll just be like really focused on maybe just like pushing blood into a certain muscle or something like that just just like a a certain contraction or whatever and uh just be really focused and just in tune with my body and then sometimes this weird thing will happen where like it's no longer i'm aware of my body it's as if like the machine that i'm on or whatever the dumbbell whatever and my body and the awareness and the entire awareness of the space just be are like all one ubiquitous thing. It's not like there's a body mm-hmm. self like doing this motion. It's as if just like the entire space is just like making an appearance in this way. <laughs> like, and that goes not just for like the surface level way of things looking, but it goes for like the depth of experience, like all of the deep, like feelings, 
even if there's thoughts that are there, it's like all of that is part of the space. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like, so, so, so those experience, uh, as, as much as I enjoy them in nature, like they seem to happen also, like regardless. <laughs> Sometimes, oh yeah, just get in those spaces. They'll just hit you randomly. It happened a couple times during that Avatar movie, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was just finding myself as like the like I'll just see something really poignant or just really feel something to the depth of which I think they meant to portray it in the movie. And like I was like, just like the like the feeling sense of the movie theater, like like it just felt like like the movie and the people watching it and the space they were watching it within, it was just like all a single happening. And like everybody was almost, almost just being like tuned to like the, uh, to, to what they were seeing, like the frequency of what they were seeing. Like I just, it just mm-hmm. felt like it was becoming tuned to it. And it was just as if it was just one thing being itself. Yeah. Um, this is like a little tangential, but like, did you have you ever had experiences where like um like the meanings of things like just unra- unspool and like it's like kind of like a fine line between like feeling paranoid crazy and also being completely enlightened to like the symbolic depth of everything happening around you <laughs> do you ever have any of those where it's totally like, it's you're worried like about too much yeah yeah you're like you're like okay like this is great uh and but let's not go too far because <laughs> like we could we could end up being being that guy we were talking about since so you know does do the weird shit <laughs> like yeah you know but it just it just reminded me of like there's a time or um i feel like it was like a readjustment period after doing a lot of ayahuasca ceremonies where like i couldn't turn off uh, the meaning or like the sim- symbol filter on my mm. brain and um and <laughs> i was watching godzilla versus king kong in the theaters and i was just blown away by all the like symbolism for humanity as like all mm. of these um like you know, characters representing different aspects of like um, human psyche, yeah. And um, it was really profound, and I think it's still accurate. And like how, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> uh, but it was just kind of funny. Like, I don't know. It's, or, I mean, maybe like another example would be like you know, you're on like eating mushrooms, and you just feel the meaning of everything, and then later on, you're like, mm. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> questionable, questionable.